Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this session is for the quick revision of optical fiber measurement techniques. In this session, we will be revising few important terms related to this optical or fiber measurement techniques. So first, optical fiber test equipments. From the exam point of view, the question may be like this. List out and explain different optical fiber measuring instruments or different test equipments. So first, this is the list of all test equipments. First is tunable laser source. So as the name indicates, it is a laser source. Uh, basically, a semiconductor type of laser source is used and it is used to measure the wavelength at a selected point. We have to select the uh, particular wavelength point and we can measure the wavelength of that laser beam. So it measures wavelength response of the optical fiber. Then to select a particular wavelength point, it makes use of movable diffraction gratings. This acts as a tunable filter. Then the range is 1280 to 1330 nanometer or range may be 1450 to 1565 nanometers. Accuracy is plus minus 1 mm millimeters. Next test equipment is multifunction tester. As the name indicates, it is performing different functions. So it contains the power meter, then it has LED indicator, which gives the visual indication for the location of brakes, then for the return losses, etc. Next is optical attenuator. As the name indicates, it is used to attenuate, reduce down the strength of optical signal. Many receivers needs a limited or a fixed amount of optical incoming power. If you are applying excess power, then it may damage the receiving device. So to avoid this, in many applications, it is required to use the optical attenuator. So this device measures the amount by which the signal is attenuated. Then visible fault locator. So as the name indicates, it gives visual indication if there is any fault in the optical cable. So it has, it contains the laser source, LS stands for laser source, which emits, which generates red visible light and which is used to observe the breaks, micro uh, cracks or micro bends inside the optical cable. The light gets reflected from such bends or uh, uh, from such breaks and the reflected light gives us the indication if there is a blinking of LED, if, if the, there is a blinking of light, then the location can be visualized. It gives the visualization up to 5 kilometers distance. Next is optical spectrum analyzer that is OSA. It measures the optical power as a function of wavelength. So it makes use of a diffraction grating. The resolution of wavelength is less than 0.1 mm is that is millimeter then OTDR optical time domain reflectometer this part we are going to study in detail because you may expect the separate question related to OTDR presently optical time domain reflectometer is used to measure the abnormalities in the optical cable then it also gives the measurement of attenuation uh, taking place uh, while uh, the signals are transmitting through the fiber optic cable, it is also used to measure the length of the optical cable. Then optical power meter. As the name indicates, it uses the measurement of total power over selected wavelength band and this indication is given usually in terms of dBm that is milli dB. So this is about the different optical fiber test equipments. Next, an important part is optical time domain reflectometer that is OTDR. This is the block diagram we just now discussed. OTDR is uh, the test equipment which is used to give the indication of the abnormalities in the optical cable as well as it is used to measure the attenuation as well as it detects the location at which the break or fault is there in the optical cable. So this is the corresponding block diagram and this is the OTDR display. Basically, OTDR is used to make the measurement using backscattered light. In optical cable, the input power is launched at one end, the, there are internal reflections and the light travels in the forward direction. If there are breaks or especially if there is a change in refractive index, then scattering of light takes place. This backscattered light is collected and then accordingly the measurements are done. 
So at this point we are using a pulsating laser as the name indicates it generates different laser pulses then we are making use of one circulator using a circulator this laser pulse is applied to the fiber optic cable. If there is a change in refractive index or there are abnormalities, backscattering takes place. This backscattered light again reaches to the circulator. From the circulator, it is directed towards the photo detector. As the name indicates, it captures the incoming light that is incoming optical signals and convert it into electrical signals. So this output of photo detector is given to the signal processing unit because we want the uh, display in the proper format. So this function is performed by signal process processing unit and this is the display part which gives this kind of display. Now uh, this this display OTDR display is a graph of optical power which is measured in dB versus distance. The nature of graph is as shown in figure. The first initial peak indicates the fractional reflection. This is the scattering or this is the reflection taking place due to the change in refractive index. This fractional reflection also occurs at the end of fiber optic cable. So this is the starting point, this is the ending point of optical cable. Then these spikes shows there are abrupt shifts at the splices or connectors. We know that uh, we have to make use of splices or connectors to join uh, the fiber optic cable. So uh, at the splices or connectors, there is an abrupt change in this graph, uh, graph of optical power versus distance. And this peaks shows uh, that this is the point where splices or, coupler, uh, splices or connectors are used. Then this particular point, this uh, peak gives an indication of fiber imperfections or if there are any breaks in the optical cable. So as I said, by observing this graph, we can uh, obtain the different information. For example, if you want to measure the attenuation, how much attenuation is taking place in the optical uh, fiber cable, then it, it is measured by making use of the slope of this graph for a particular desired time, for a particular desired length. Then if you want to measure the location, I mean distance where actually break is there in the fiber optic cable or where actually fault is existing in the fiber optic cable, then it is given by the equation L is C T upon 2 N1. C is the speed of light in free space, T is the time period. Actually this time period is for the forward light ray reaching up to the fault and then from the fault the light is getting reflected back. So it is combination of the two divided by 2 N1. N1 is the refractive index of the core layer. So this is about the working, I mean block diagram of OTDR as well as OTDR display. Next is fiber attenuation measurements. To measure the attenuation, that is reduction uh, taking place when the signals are passing through the fiber optic cable, different techniques are available, but most commonly used technique is cut back method. So this diagram uh, is the block diagram of cut back method used to measure the fiber attenuation. At the input side, we are using white light source. It can be a tungsten lamp or xenon lamp, which produces a white light. Then this is the lens which is used at the input side to focus the light properly. Then this block shows the chopper. Chopping of incoming light takes place. Chopping means making on and off. This signal is also applied to lock-in amplifier at the receiver side. This part represents the receiver side. So it avoids the power fluctuations. So this chopping is done at the input side. Then a monochromator is used. Monochromator is used to select a particular wavelength for which we want to measure, we want to take the measurement. So the function of this monochromator is to select one wavelength out of all available wavelengths. Then again, using lens, the light is focused and given to the order sor sorting filter. This block is especially required in case of multi-mode fibers because in multi-mode fibers, many modes are available, but we want a steady state readings. So higher order modes must be blocked. This function is done by order sorting filter, which selects only lower order mode. This is applicable only for multi-mode fibers. Then some reference signals are applied over here, just again to avoid the fluctuations in the output signal. Again, using lens, the light is focused to micro scrambler. Again, this block is required for multi-mode fibers because 
uh, we need a steady state observation, steady state readings. Sometimes if you are not using this micro scrambler, then before getting the steady state values of a readings, instead of using the actual fiber, some dummy fiber is used. But you can well use of a micro scrambler in order to uh, observe that we should we are getting a steady state output for the multimode fibers. Next block is cladding mode stripper. As the name indicates, it is it is the thing, it is the block which is responsible to avoid the losses that are taking place from core to the cladding layer. Actually, this is S-shaped groove and it consists of a Teflon uh, material which contains the uh, some kind of uh, liquid material that is a glycerin which is having refractive index equal to or slightly higher than that of core. So it is used to avoid the losses that are taking place <coughs> when the light enters into the cladding layer. This is the actual fiber through which the signal passes. Then again at the output end, we are making use of cladding mode stripper for the same reason to avoid the light rays entering into the uh, cladding layer. Then we are using indexed matched photo detector. Actually APD that is avalanche photo detector is used but using some gel uh, index matching is done again to avoid the losses. Then its output is given to lock-in amplifier. One signal for lock-in amplifier is from the chopper. Lock-in amplifier locks that signal and this is the record and display part. Initially, uh, the readings are taken for a particular fiber of certain length. Usually length should be greater than or equal to one kilometer. Then the fiber is cut from the input end at two meters and again the readings are taken. So two times reading is taken. You need to you need to take the readings first time by using original fiber optic cable, then cut the fiber optic cable and again take the readings. So this is the destructive method as far as the disadvantage. This is the major disadvantage of this method is concerned. But accuracy of this method is much larger compared to the other methods. Then you are taking the readings two times one with original fiber optic cable and then uh, replace that cable uh, then cut that cable and again join it and take the readings so final attenuation is given in db as 10 log l1 minus l2 log to the best 10 v2 upon v1 l1 is length of original fiber optic cable l2 is when you cut the fiber optic cable at two meters from the input end that length is denoted by l2 v2 is corresponding to l2 and v1 is the voltage corresponding to l1 so by making use of this formula we can measure the fiber attenuation this is the cut back method to measure the fiber attenuation next part is measurement of dispersion rather this setup shows how to measure intermodal dispersion of an optical cable. We are making use of pulse laser source. As the name indicates, it generates different uh, pulses of the light's uh, signal. Then lens 1 is used, is, its output is applied to the beam splitter. As the name indicates, the function of beam splitter is to split the beam into two parts. We will first talk about this portion. The output from the beam splitter is applied to lens 5. Lens 5 focuses this light rays and it is applied to APD. APD is avalanche photodiode. Output of this APD is applied as a trigger signal to this sampling oscilloscope that is sampling CRO. Do remember this particular uh, light of pulses are directly applied to the APD. They are not propagating through the fiber optic cable. So we can say this represents the input pulse. Now the second portion from the beam splitter is applied to lens 2. Again, lens 2 is used to focus the light rays. Then these light rays propagates through FOC. FOC is fiber optic cable. Whenever the light rays are propagating through the fiber optic cable, broadening of pulses takes place. At the output, we are making use of two lenses, lens 3 and lens 4. And again, we are making use of APD. So APD is avalanche photodiode. It converts optical signal into electrical signal. This particular portion is the portion of a light rays which is passing, propagating through the fiber optic cable. Then the output of APD is given to another input of the sampling oscilloscope. <coughs> now actual pulse uh, dispersion is given by 3 dB which is T0 square of 3 dB. T0 is the pulse width of output pulse. Output pulse is the pulse which is coming after propagating through the fiber optic cable minus Ti square uh, 3 dB. Ti is the pulse width of input pulse. 
L is the length of optical cable, length of this FOC fiber optic cable. Uh, and we are taking uh, square root of numerator term. So this is bracket raised to one half divided by L. Now, once you get the pulse broadening, which is TDB, bandwidth can be calculated using the equation B is 0.44 upon T3DB. Now, let us talk how to measure the NA, that is numerical aperture of an optical cable. This is the setup to measure the numerical aperture. At the input side, we are making use of a light source that is LED or a laser. Output of this light source is propagating through FOC, fiber optic cable. Then we are using one rotating fiber mount. As the name indicates, this fiber mount, uh, by making use of this fiber mount, we can rotate one end of the optical cable. Then through small aperture, this light ray is allowed to fall on the photo detector. As the name indicates, photo detector converts incoming optical light rays into electrical signal and its output is applied to the power meter. Every time the rotation of one end of the optical cable is done and readings are taken uh, by making use of this power meter such that you are getting certain accepting readings at the output. So all the readings are no, uh, noted, <clears throat> whatever available possible readings by uh, rotating this fiber mount are noted. Then numerical aperture is given by N0, N0 is the refractive index of the medium uh, apart from the optical cable. That means if the light ray is coming from the air medium and then entering into the fiber optic cable, then N0 will be 1 because N0 of air is 1, sine theta max where theta max is one half of the acceptance angle. As I said, acceptance angle gives all the measurement, means, means whenever you are rotating this fiber mount and you are taking all the readings, whatever possible readings that you are getting after rotating one end of the optical cable gives the value of acceptance angle. So by making use of this formula, we can measure the numerical aperture of an optical cable. Now, the last uh, part of this unit is eye pattern. So this is the diagram of the eye pattern. Eye pattern is used to make the measurement of different things that we will discuss. This is the typical setup to measure the eye pattern. The basic things are the received signal is applied to the Y plate of the CRO that is Y plate uh, of the oscilloscope and sawtooth signal, this uh, pattern B generator is used. The sawtooth signal is applied to the X plate of the CRO. So, if received signal is, is a digital signal that is a series of logic zeros and logic one, they are getting overlapped with the, on the sawtooth signal and a pattern is generated which looks like an eye, so it is called eye pattern. This is the particular display uh, which we can observe on the oscilloscope. So, different readings can be taken from this display. As I have written few important points. So, this is like a, a straight line. The slope of this straight line gives the measurement of sensitivity of the timing error. Now, the width of eye opening, this particular portion indicates the eye opening. The width of this, this particular part, width of eye opening gives the value of uh, sampling interval. So, if I am talking about the width, this is the height. If I am talking about the width, this width gives us the value of sampling interval. Then height of this eye opening gives us the value of margin over noise. This particular instant at which you are getting eye opening gives us the instant of best sampling. So this represents the best sampling time period. This width indicates the distortions at the sampling. This particular height indicates the distortions of zero crossing. So width of eye openings gives sampling interval, height of eye openings gives margin over noise this particular portion, rate of eye closing, whenever the closing of eye takes place, that means this diagram gets compressed. So rate of eye closing gives the value of sensitivity to the timing errors and when eye is completely closed, it affects the maximum effect. It indicates the maximum effect of intersymbol interference, that is ISI intersymbol interference. So all these informations can be generated once this eye pattern is displayed on the oscilloscope. So dear students, that's it for the quick revision session of optical measurement. So thank you. Thanks a lot for watching this video.